People, deluded, I'm back again. Thank you very much for tuning in. I almost forgot what I wanted to say. Obviously, there isn't much to speak about, but courtesy of just browsing the internet, I've come across Quincy Awuso at Bay, former wonder kid at Arsenal, now actually a rapper. R.I.P. Paddy Galligan, Gall Gallian, sorry. Um, Paddy, if you, you know, he might not be a name that anyone recognises, but if you ask Thierry on real, many Arsenal players over the years who he is, don't know fully is who he is. Few people are more Arsenal than him. I mean, he literally at times slept in the Emirates, he, uh, Emirates Highbury, um, and he did a lot, but we'll get on to it. And like I said, R.I.P, man, because he was someone that loved Arsenal Football Club like us and really loved Arsenal. Now, in relation to Quincy Owusu at Bay, in theory, many people will look at his career and say he wasn't a success. He was seen as a wonder kid. What has he done of note? He's been at Ajax, he's been at Arsenal. If you ask Arsenal and Ajax fans randomly on the street, if you can go out now, who, who he is, they might scratch their head. No disrespect. And any other clubs he's played for. But on one hand, he, like I say with a lot of kids, as players, especially kids coming out of the ends or the hood or whatever, he's won. He's won. He's lived two street dreams or what I would call concrete jungle dreams because looking at it, I mean, who didn't want to... You either want to be a footballer, you want to be a rapper, you want to be both. He did both of that. There's other ways, but typically that's what you see. Um, and you can, and I do think as well, the sad theme of how his career has gone and how it is, I don't think those around him, without knowing them and, and whatnot, he needs to take responsibility because he's been, you know, not necessarily sensible. But... When things like this happen, I have to question, are the right people around you and people that are around you, do they have your interests at heart or do they just see the fact that you're blowing up and you're doing good things as their meal ticket out, which could be the case. Only he can tell you that. And he said, and courtesy of the athletic, I've only got the points that I find relevant, people. Um, we're going to be here for a while. It said, when I didn't have nothing, it was Arsenal who took me on. If it wasn't for Arsenal, maybe I would have led a different life. Maybe I would have had just a normal 9 to 5. Maybe I would have been a street guy. I don't know. But fortunately, I got that call. He did speak about being called for a trial and being mesmerised by Arsene Wenger. And he did speak about, um, yeah, on these sort of things. He said, on his on being raised, he said, I was born and raised in Amsterdam. Pijamir is the area. It's basically the hood. It wasn't easy. It was hard. It was a rough area. In some ways, though, it was a lovely place for me to grow up. I met friends there. We were all there for each other, hanging around on in the blocks after school, going to school together. But it was very dark at times. Like I said, he seems a bit naive and misguided and not sure how to navigate the world. And I don't think he was shown how to protect his wealth. I don't think he was shown how to navigate. I don't think he was shown how to act in a certain sort of way, people. Um, when I was growing up around the older guys on the block, they were obviously doing what they're doing, making money, driving around in big cars, looking expensive, big wrist rollies, you know, which, you know, we see that in the ends, people. That have, like, this just makes me going back in memory lane. That's the stuff I used to see when I was a kid. I was attracted to it. Of course I would. Of course you would. He said, I thought it was fly. I was always looking up to them and thinking, why can't I be that guy? And everybody wants to do that, not just necessarily in ends, but in a corporate environment. Everybody wants to be the CEO or whatever, where everybody's at their beck and call. Everybody wants to be the guy. I want to be the guy. I'm not saying I'm watching someone and say, I want to be you, but we all want nice things. And it is what it is. If you don't want nice things or want better things for yourself, I'd say you're a liar, really. Like, And there's nothing wrong with that. Um, he said, yeah, man, he said... Um, I can't, why can't I be that guy pulling up in a big whip and having girls around? That's what it was for me. So he expected the lifestyle. I respected them for how they looked, but I didn't know exactly what they were doing to live that life. And my mum always told me, don't watch what people have because you don't know how they got it. And it's fully true and it's always served me, but it's easier said than done. Um, he said, when I was a kid, I just loved playing football. But as I got older, I kind of realised. I saw Dennis Burkett playing for, for Arsenal. I watched Holland in the World Cup. And I saw, oh, this is something I could do to get a better, to get out or better my life. That's how football became the way out for me. My style was definitely from the streets. A lot of tricks and stuff, definitely. Everyone knows how street football is. The technique is different. You've got to be a very skilled player to play that game. I played on the streets every day, and it's true. Um, he obviously had discipline issues and, and whatnot um, as a kid and whatnot, and he was troubled and maybe misunderstood. He said... 
I got released because of my mentality. I wasn't the good kid that always listened, never says a word and gets the job done. And I see this with a lot of British kids. They need to be tamed and it needs to rein it in, but they're not always rude. They're just outspoken sometimes. And I do think in today's day and age, a lot of football, a lot of academy coaches don't get the, the demographical sort of thing, people. But um, he always said, um, I never say words and just get the job done. I always had something to say. At that age, it's not good. After years and years, they finally thought, you know what, we can't do anything with Quincy right now. He's too much for us. And that will be the case. You've even seen with Ravel Morrison, talent will get you to a certain period. But as you get older, some people just say it's, it's not worth the stress. I think the only people that would are worth the consistent stress would be if Lionel Messi and Cristiano were like this. At our point, it's like, you know what, you're a talented player, but it is what it is. He did speak about... Um, he was excited when he got the call to play for Arsenal and he was in shock, more or less. I'm not going to... Just keep speaking about that, but getting into the bulk of it, he said, I flew out to London, got to the training ground at London Coley, then I met Wenger, Arsene Wenger. That's when I knew it was real. I've been dreaming about it, thinking about it. Am I really going to go to Arsenal? Then I saw the training ground and I met Arsene and I was like, oh, that's real. That moment when I met Arsene is when it sort of sank in when I realised it's not on TV anymore. He's standing in front of me, wishing me good luck on the trial. So I look at my agent and my agent looked at me and it was like, boy, i got to get the job done. That's crazy, people. That is, that, that's crazy. And he also, I'm not going to get into it as well, but he did speak about adapting to English culture and things. He spoke about listening to Soul Solid, listening to Dizzy Rascal, Wiley and things. And music has always been a big passion of his. Like any kids, like, I'm sure music, and, and look, looking in my life as a, as a you know, a, a, a black British male of Caribbean descent, um, like many people, football's a big part, but music... All, the, all, all sorts of music, whether it's, the, you know, the Berries Hammonds and things like that and Luther Vandross or it's the Beanie Mans and the Vibes and all of these sort of things, classical and more modern music. You grow up with music and it becomes a big part of your life. And definitely I've always had a passion for music myself, like not to make it on that, but I've loved music. I think like, music can tell stories and put people's lives into perspective and express in ways you can't, ways you can only get from football. And... He's a kid from ENDS. He wanted to come out the end, so it's a footballer. And, a, and a, he wanted to be a footballer and a rapper. And many people see that, you know, he played for Arsenal and he was spoken of potential. He ain't got nowhere. But at the end of the day, he's lived two sh dreams for any city kids there over, over the world. He's been a rapper and a footballer. He's been, you know, he's made money from this thing. Um, so, yeah, he also spoke about how Jerome, Jerome Thomas, Bentner and, and Johan Dujur were his friends. And he also spoke how Bentner had he had a song from Ghana from his native land of Ghana, his parents' background. And he said Bentner used to love the song. Couldn't understand what he was saying, but he used to love the song. Um, it was from an artist called Ofare Amposa. So my Ghanaians hit me up with them famous songs if you know that. But um, yeah. He did also speak about um, being around the first team with Thierry Henry and how he used to, because being in charge of music or liking music, he was kind of in charge and um, he spoke of Thierry Henry telling him to put his iPod in one day um, and how, you know, it made him feel some sort of way and things like that. Um, so, yeah, in the more important fits, obviously he's become a rapper now and he's kept that, he, he's kept that... Um, sort of hidden until, well, while he was playing and rapping, he kept it hidden, but now it's known. He said, and what kind of sums it up, that it's a big passion of it, he says, scoring a goal in front of a crowd is great, but it's completely different. It's a completely different thing, a completely different feeling, man. The thing with music is you're bringing out a message. You're saying stuff that not everyone could relate to. You're trying to paint a picture so that everyone can understand you. And it's crazy, people. It's crazy. And uh, it's, you know what? He's been a success, people. There's nothing more you can say of that. Um, in relation to Paddy Gilligan, Gillian, sorry, mispronunciations, may his soul rest in peace. I was an Arsenal fan before I was even a thing, but reading this article did bring me close to tears because it's difficult in life to do things you love, and I'm not going to read it all, but in short, this was a man who fell off a roof and just got up and got on with it. This is a man who used to make sure people had tea when they had, um, had, uh, had um, what's, the, what's the thing again? Not headaches, what's the word? Hi were hung over. This was a man f that did for Highbury. No job was too big or small. He took everything on the chin and he loved it. And he was a recognisable face for staff members and players. And this is what it's about, the community sort of thing, the feeling. This is what I mean when I say, if you're not going to play for yourselves, play for people like Paddy. Man, people used to ask after him. Sadly, he lost his life when we moved to the Emirates. But this is 
nothing but respect for him and I hope his soul is resting in peace. But um, he started off as a member of the ground staff in the 1978-79 season. And since then, he's ne he never actually had a job description. He used to do everything and anything. And apparently, um, he had a flat, but the water was cold, so he could be seen in, in the Highbury baths having a wash from time to time, people. And if he liked you, um, when it came to the end of the season and people giving out kit, he would make sure you were right. Um, Thierry Henry described him as part of the stadium. Everybody knew Paddy, and Paddy knew everyone. People like him used to be the life blood of a football club and it's true big and small these used to is they are the life of the people that paint is all the players are one thing the cultures are another but it's the parents and the avid supporters it's the it's the lady the 80 year old lady who wakes up and makes all the teas and sandwiches and burgers it's the ground staff who are laying the paints and stuff this is what makes a football club this is what a football club's about sadly i'm not going to say the fans have gone away because we're being fleeced we're paying all heap of money for tickets and tv and stuff but we're not the heartbeat anymore. But this is what it should be about. We are, this is this is it. This is what it's about. Community, sense of doing more for your other man and stuff like that. Um, George Graham recalls how Paddy's face lit up when the manager was in late. Paddy was always the last one to lock up. I'd take him up to my upstairs office and crack open the whiskey and we would just have a chat. Such a nice man. Eventually, I'd think, best go home. Paddy was home already. There isn't an inch of Highbury he didn't know like the back of his hand. One of his favourite spots was up on the roof. There wasn't much of a barrier in terms of health and safety, so the view across London felt open and vast. On sunny days, any excuse to nip up and take his top up and lay, lie down on his own for a quiet sunbathe was seized. The roofs were hazardous. Stuart McFarlane, as you lot know, the club's photographer, sometimes climbed up some high cameras while he watched his step Paddy would bounce around seemingly without a care in the world, which is crazy, people. And apparently he fell off it at one time and he fell off something once and he got up and just held it up, people. Um, apparently the sound of Paddy in the showers of the first team dressing room was often heard floating up by other staff working late at Highbury. He was known for plunging into one of the old tin freestanding baths, run to the ring with bubbles pouring over the side. It must have been a unique exercise for a member of staff to live on site and the change rooms in his manner, Stuart McFarlane said. On match days, he would clean the dressing room, make sure everybody, everything was ready, help a bit with the kit, and he would be there when the team arrived. He was probably the only non-coaching staff who would be in the dressing room the whole time. Then he would sweep up around after the players when they came back in full time. He was close to George Graham. Arsenal wouldn't bat an eyelid around him as he was part of the fabric of Arsenal. Paddy had his own favourites. Writing the, in the program about his life at Arsenal, he once explained, My hero on and off the field is Tony. You'll never get another Tony Adams. I've known him so long that now when I talk to him, it's like talking to a son. And that's crazy. And it's crazy. And Pat, Pat Rice, another one. If you mention Arsenal, and you should know what Pat Rice is about, people. Couldn't, again, I'm not going to bore you lot. Please go on The Athletic and read it. Um, um, yeah, people. He, he, Pat Rice didn't have a bad word to say about him. Um, he's done a lot of stuff people I mean he's done stuff from taking the match day earnings back in them days from a cardboard box um, to Barclays in, in Finsbury Park where our counts were done he's laid, he's helped cut the grass with a lawnmower he's laid markings of paint he's done stuff with windows um, he's, just, he's just always done it with his head screwed on people um, and he sounds like a bubble of fresh air and just on, on top of that he just sounds like a good he's described as like a mascot for the team he just sounds like a good human who just enjoyed his life and very humble sadly people in the summer of the final of the final match in 06 um, as we moved to the Emirates he was on holiday in Greece and had a heart attack he had been worried about what he would come back to as there was no row, no row at the Emirates um, that he could be replaced with, um, which is sad, people. And I think in the kitchen, he actually, at the Emirates, is called Paddy's Kitchen, people. And, I mean, like, I, when I first read it, it moved me to tears because he's living his dream, man. That is, I want to do that one day. Not exactly that, but he's living his dream. Like, it didn't feel like work. Many people don't get that. He's a heartbeat of the club. Many people don't hear stories like that. He he is an, as important. People like that are as important to Arsenal than any legendary player, any goals we've they've scored and things. These are the things. And sadly, he's not living anymore. But his legacy has to live on, man. And Arsenal have done their bit. If I can do my bit for a guy like this, just speaking on this article, then it is what it is, man. Paddy, rest in peace, man. God, this is 
you know, you've acted with integrity. Above all, you just seem like a good person, people, a good person. And you deserve, you know, your soul to be at peace. So I hope your family have strength and they look back with fondness of how nice of a person you was. Moving away from that, though, people, and a former, well, he's not a former player, a player that's been here for around seven, eight years or so now, Iliev, who's on loan in Poland, joined us at 17, been here eight years. He's speaking in relation to his time at Arsenal and how he came about and stuff. And yeah, man, um, he actually spoke a bit about mental health also, which is a big, takes a lot to do. He said, not long before I was watching the TV, pardon me, not long before I was watching him on TV, then suddenly here I was with him right here. It felt like I had wings on my body. That was in reference to seeing Arsene Wenger. I was nervous because I knew, this is in relation to his trial, I was nervous because I knew I had to do well if I wanted to sign. But at the same time, it was great motivation for me to be surrounded by people like that. I was thinking, if I'm here, I must be worth it. Good mentality from the 20, now 25-year-old to have. Um, speaking about he said it's gone quickly. When you're at a club like this, people take care of you and make you feel really happy. I've learned a lot as Arsenal. at Arsenal. I went there as a boy and now I'm a grown man. Not just football, but in life. And that's why people, especially goalies, don't want to move on, people. Look how long Martinez has been here. Um, he's been here since 25, but he's technically an Arsenal professional footballer. So he is living the dream. It's a tough ask for him to break into the first team. I don't know if he's got it in him. At 25 years of age, to not have a senior appearance of any capacity, despite being on the bench, I believe, in Banku or as a third-choice keeper, um, it's not going to happen. I don't think it is going to happen, people. He was on the bench twice under Wenger as well, so he's getting close. But, it's, you know, he's entering... Um, he's entered his second decade as an Arsenal player and he's just yet to make an appearance. So, it's sad, really, but is what it is. He said, after I came back from injury in 2017, I had to train for one year to get back my fitness. In 2018, I was the third choice keeper when me, Peter Cech and Bruno and Leno, sorry, Bird Leno, all went to the Europa League final. So he went on the bench, he was the third choice. When I asked if I could go out on loan to get some experience, oh sorry people, he said, then I asked if I could go out on loan to get some experience. I'm now here in Poland and hopefully in the future, I'll get the chance to show my quality at Arsenal. I really hope that this will happen and I'm working hard to get this chance. I'm not going to give up. I still believe I can make it. As you lot know, in 2015, he sustained a knee injury, which kept him sidelined for a minute. Um, but then because of um, several injuries, several operations and complications, um, he was more or less spent two years on a, on, a, on a treatment table. And he's got incredible mental strength for people because um, he could have let that make or break him. And he's, let it, he's not let it break him because he's going back. He's obviously on loan now doing his thing in Poland. Even though I haven't watched the game from him in Poland, I don't know how I'm meant to watch that. I'm never going to front. But um, he said, it was a di very difficult time and I didn't know where I was going. I was stuck in a place where at some points I thought my career would be over because of the injury. Even the doctors couldn't believe what's happening. So again, strong mentally, people. Mentally, it was tough. As the time was going by and with the uncertainty of what was happening, it was getting more and more difficult. I'd worked with the psychologist at Arsenal and that really helped me to try and stay positive as much as possible i was talking to them open and honest i got to the point when i said this is going to be career ending one for me because it seemed like there was no way out but then i started to believe again i had my second i had my last operation i said it was my last operation and that i would give it a go after that my knee was feeling good and it all worked out arsenal was so supportive the psychologists the doctors the whole club were behind me and i believe and believed in me when I look back, it's not a nice pleasure, but it definitely made me stronger. And nowadays, I play football without any problems. Um, he then spoke about the psychological stuff and being using you to being you know open up and that and liaising with psychologists and things like that. He said, "When we are all good, we think we don't need help, and that is the biggest statement, the biggest thing I've taken away. That's fully true." But when we are bad or have a bad game or a bad day, sometimes you have negative thoughts and this is important to control. If you make a mistake in a game after 20 minutes and you have to play the rest of the night still thinking about the mistake you've made, you destroy yourself and you won't show the quality you have. So I believe psychologists play a big part and a big role in football. They help you train yourself, train your brain and naturally be prepared that if something goes wrong, you can bounce back and perform at the highest level. And that's going to help him a lot. Forget as a footballer, as a human being, as there's many setbacks already in, in his life already. It's going to help him. And he's 25, sat at, you know, he's a year older than me. So maybe even a couple of months. 
So you can only imagine what it's only going to get worse. We're going to have to bury loved ones. We're going to see the world change. We're going to go through, you know, losses of roles and things like that. Obviously, he's a footballer, so it's different. But there's certain things you've, that that's happened to me already and, got, and were going to happen as we advance that you've got to be able to keep your head straight or narrow. Not to say you're not going to feel bad, but you've got to know that these situations, no matter how permanent it feels, can get through it. And this will help him. Forget as a footballer, man. That's just a benefit. That's just the ice on top of the cake as a effing human being. He spoke in relation to his teammates or past teammates. He said, Bird is a top... Bird, Burn, as in Leno, is a top keeper, one of the best in the Prem. He's actually a very good friend of mine. We talk regularly and, he, and message each other. He's not just a good keeper. He's a great person as well. And I must admit, even seeing Leno on YouTube with like chunks and that, he's got the bench, you know. Leno's a bit, Leno's a bit of a funny one. He's, he's got jokes. But moving forward, he said, I learned a lot from him and Peter Cech. Working with them was a great experience for me. He was my idol growing up. When I was little, I was watching him and pretending to be him. He was a great role model for me. So it was a pleasure to work with him at Arsenal. It was amazing to be part of his career. So at the end of the day, yeah, man, he's rubbed shoulders with Peter Cech. He's played for Arsenal. He's been at Arsenal for a number of periods of times. Fair enough, he ain't made his debut, but he's fir he's firmly living the dream. So yeah, we've spoken about Ilya 